For years, I've heard people say you can't time markets. Well, maybe that is true. More and more we're seeing quantitative models that are timing markets. What do I mean by timing markets? Well, being able to identify changes in market behavior before they actually happen. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can use the VIX, the volatility index, to indicate when markets will become more and more bullish and more and more bearish, or when they possibly will crash. What is the VIX? Well, the VIX is the volatility index for the S&P 500. And what it does is it, it's a statistical measurement of option behavior against the S&P 500. And what it tells us is if markets are bullish or bearish. But there are multiple volatility indexes and they're based on time frames. So for instance, in this example, I'm gonna use the VIX, the VIX, I'm gonna, which is a 30 day indicator. I'm gonna use the short term VIX, which is a nine day indicator a 90-day VIX, which is 90 days, six-month VIX, and a one-year VIX version. And what these will tell us when you start to look at the data is how markets are behaving on the long term and on the short term. Our world has become more and more quantitatively driven. Data is showing us how to time behavior. So when you're looking at these volatility indicators, you're looking from a nine day all the way out to 12 months. And what you're looking for, for a bullish market risk on, you want to see the nine day be at its lowest and the 12 month to be at the highest. So an upward trending slope. When you see the reverse, the nine day at the top and the 12 month at the bottom, a downward trending slope, that's a bearish market. Well, on January 16th of 2020, we saw a upward trending volatility line, which is bullish. It's a it was a continuation of what was going on in 2019. And that was a great time to be in the market. But as we got into late February, we saw the nine day volatility index start to go up. So we saw it move from, uh, I believe, low nine level to 14. And then on the 25th, it went from a 14 to a 25. So all of a sudden, the nine through the 12 month flattened. So you had a flat uh, volatility curve. Well, actually no curve at all, just a flat between nine day to 12 months. And then all of a sudden, it jumped. The nine day jumped, the 30 day went up, uh, then followed by the 90 day, the six month, and then the 12 month. And what it created was a 12, was a downward trending volatility slope. Well, all of a sudden, markets were starting to sell off. And when I talk about timing the market, I'm not gonna nail it. Well, nobody's gonna nail it. And sometimes you'll completely miss it. But by using the volatility indexes and watching our behavior as investors, we can anticipate what is to come in the markets. Now today, markets trade, S&P 500 trades, right now between a 20 on the low side of the VIX and a high side of 26. And that's the 30 day period. If you go look at the nine day presently, we're about 17 or so. In the high end on the 12 month, I think is right around 28 as of this recording. So we have a upward trending slope. But what you'll see is when you study the data and you keep up with this, you'll start to understand the movements in the market in behavior of every investor. So when markets started to bottom in March, I think around the 23rd, 
The nine day was well over, I believe, 80. The VIX, the uh, v VIX was, I believe, in about the 80, or right in the 80 range. So, and the 12 month was way, way below. So in the low 20s, even teens, I believe, at one time. And that is a downward trending volatility slope. When you see that, that's risk off. But as you saw the nine day decline in value and the 12 month incline, you saw risk on sometime in April. Why is this important? Well, if you believe that markets will sell off again, the volatility indexes can give you a leading indicator to what you should do, how you should invest. Should you be risk on, risk off? Are you gonna time it perfectly? Absolutely not. Because even if you look at the, that 21st to the 25th, or I believe it was the 25th, what you saw was you went from a 14 on the nine day to I believe a 25. So a major jump over the weekend. It happened quick. But what you would have seen was a move in the nine day from the low digit, single digits, to all of a sudden the double digits. And then you saw the VIX do the same. I believe you can come within the ballpark when it comes to timing markets. Using the volatility indexes, using risk ranges, using math to generate ideas of where you should be in the market, risk on, risk off. Are you trading on the high side, a low side of a position? Or should you trim your positions? By using a ma mathematical formulas, you're able to anticipate what, thing, what markets are gonna do, what stocks are gonna do, and what bond mar bonds are gonna do. I love the volatility index because it really is a understanding or a leading indicator to how we are behaving. And when we saw the reaction of the market from January to March of this past year, 2020, it was, it was like right in our face. It was there the whole time. So I encourage you to get into the VIX, the volatility indexes. The NASDAQ 100 has VXN, which is a volatility index, along with oil, along with the Russell 2000, and many others. Even some individual stocks have volatility indexes. This can be a very good indicator for you to better risk manage your portfolio overall. By the way, it's really cold here in this sunset. Let's see if we can get it here. Is really pretty. So I hope you have a great Sunday and a great week and use that volatility indexes as a leading indicator so you can best risk manage your portfolios.